Hey, what's up, folks? Hacksplain here. In this episode today, we're going to have a look at another Bug Bunny platform for you out there. I'm going to show you the pros and cons. We're going to check out the interface, and by the end of the day, you're ready to hack on it. All right, so let's jump straight into it. Where we are standing right now is the homepage of a Bug Bunny platform player called Integrity. And I want to show you what Integrity is, how to use Integrity, what the Bug Bunny platform looks like, and how you can submit your first bug. Next to all of that, I'm also telling you a little bit about the pros and cons in my opinion. So before we start, I want to just quickly skim over the, the, the landing page of Integrity and point out a few interesting facts. So the first thing that pops into my eyes right here is that Integrity says that they do have around 100 active programs, they do have around 15,000 security researchers, and they have paid out 1. million up to this point. That is well not as much as a couple of other big players but it's quite a decent number anyway and if we look a little closer over here it says their clients include companies like Kinopolis, Brussels Airlines, Randstad and a couple of others we'll see more of that later um, one other thing that I noticed when I scrolled down there is a lot of information to find over here but if I reach the latest news section I saw the bug bites section over here and if you're not aware of bug bites that is just a curated newsletter which contains so much interesting information i really really like what integrity is doing with bug bites because you can learn so much about it so if you haven't seen or haven't read any bug bites newsletters or articles by now i can only recommend you to do that let's just quickly jump into one there is usually a well a landing page like this where it tells you that um, there is five favorite items of the week they're talking about like um, the best conference the best write-up the best tool the best tutorial and the best non-technical item but apart from that there's just so much interesting stuff in it like good hacking videos, good hacking podcasts, webinars, conferences, tutorials. So that is really, really great what they're doing with Bug Bytes, and I really need you to check this out. All right, let's go over to here for now. So this is LinkedIn, and I always like to look up the company to get an idea how big they are, how many employees they have, and since when they're existing. And the most important information I guess is or the most interesting one is that they apparently have right here right over here it says 11 to 50 employees in the top right it says 77 so I, I trust that number a little more so I guess they're roughly having around 80 to 90 employees and they were founded in 2016 and are currently still privately held so they're not public and if we look a little closer to the right side of this page, you see that similar companies are HackerOne, BugCrowd, Yes, We Hack, and Cynic. And I'm pretty sure you're aware of those. So those are all the big players, and Integrity tries to become one of them. And with that, I'm going to jump straight into the portal. So I am already logged in to the portal with my user called Hacksplay, and as you can see in the top right corner, and this is the starting page that I got. So right here it tells me, welcome back, Hexplain. Well, that's lovely, thank you for that. And it immediately shows me a couple of programs that apparently had updates. So that is interesting to know about those because if there are updates, that usually means, for example, they have a new item in scope or something like that, which for you means that there is a lot of opportunity out there to find more vulnerabilities and to make more money. So that is interesting to see programs which have updates. Um, apart from that, there's not much more to see over here. Um, next 
if I just go from left to right, I would go to browse programs. And that is anyway, the most interesting part of any bug bunny program. So those that we are seeing here right now are the companies that run bug bunny programs on integrity. And I'll just um, scroll over this page for a bit. So we see K11, we, we see Arcane, Talonat, Coric Group, Balfius, B Post, Brussels Airlines, and a couple of others. So my first thought when I saw that was those companies are not too big. So to me, it seems that it's, well, I guess medium sized companies apart from Brussels Airlines right here, which are currently going with um, integrity, or it might be just me not knowing a couple of those. Anyway, what else can we find over here? So I think it's quite interesting to get a super quick idea of what those programs are all about. And this is what this one or two line here is giving you. So it tells you a little something about the company without you having to read a lot. And obviously the most important information for a bug bunny hunter usually is the reward table. And that you can see right over here as well. For example, over here, it tells you, you can make up to 2,500 euros by hacking KU11. And what else do we see over here? So for example, this program is not requiring you to have your ID checked. So if we look a little further down, this one, call right group, this one over here needs you to have your ID checked. So that probably means they are, well, how should I put that? They just want to have a group of people who are trusted a little more than, let's say, the entire pool of hackers on integrity. And for that, they need those hackers to be background checked. What else? We see that there is reputation points which can be earned hacking on those programs. They do have the triaging service by integrity. And that's it. So that's pretty nice short and quick overview of programs. What I do not like too much is that if I scroll down, I guess that was like seven or eight programs. I do have this little slider down here where I have to go to the next page and then I can keep searching for other programs. That is just for my taste, not enough programs on one page. It's a little cumbersome to scroll over all of them. But what you can do is you can filter them and see if there's, well, for example, a program where you have a, where you need, well, what's public, let's say you need a public one because you haven't received any invites yet. You definitely wanna have an open program because you wanna submit something. You wanna get a bounty for it. And yeah, that brings us to this program only. So let me clear that one more time. You could, for example, also say, I wanna have a program where my identity needs to be checked because there are probably less people hacking on those because not everybody wants to get their identity checked. And with that, you can make this list a little smaller and then just scroll through them that you really wanna hack on. But still, the browsing experience is not the best to me compared to a couple of other bug bunny programs. Um, with that, let's just go into a program. I wanna start with, it doesn't really matter. I wanna start with which one sounds interesting. There is um, shop apotheca right here. So let's select that one and see what we can find in here. So, if I go to that, I don't see a lot of information. And why is that? The point here is that I have selected one where ID check is required. And as I haven't gone through that process yet, I actually don't see much more information. So that is one of those examples where I, first of all, cannot hack on, and I do not even get all the information as on other programs because I'm not ID checked. All right, so let's go back and use another program where this is not needed. So if we go to KU Leuven, for example, we do see no IT check required. We click on it and we immediately see that there is more information. There's a short description. 
the bounty table is right on top which I really like because that is what most people are most interested in and it starts from low up to exceptional so that is a little different to all the other big buck bunny players because usually it goes from low to like critical here is another level which is called exceptional well I don't know what you have to do for that to be exceptional but it gotta be pretty good alright what else can we see the domains that are in scope which in that case are two IP ranges and a URL what sort of vulnerabilities we have in scope what is out of scope so that is actually a big list of items out of scope but anyway that helps you because you immediately know that if you for example found a CSV injection you're not supposed to hand it in so check that before handing in your submission a couple of general notes rules of engagements and what else severity assessment and an FAQ the FAQ is actually something that I really like which a lot of other programs do not demand you to put down and with that there are a lot of questions coming in to the triaging teams or actually to the companies behind the Bug Bunny program which can be easily answered by an FAQ as you can find it over here alright so that is pretty much it you can find on a brief of a company I think that all the necessary information is listed it's for my taste I don't know if this is due to KU Logan not putting down a little more but um, a little well not how should I put that not too well structured for example in scope section the in scope section over here looks a little shabby I don't really know what I should do with that anyway what else can we find on the right side in here we see the last contributors we see some activity and we can also check out the leaderboard of this program in here and for some reason there are no researchers on the board so let me go to another one maybe this one hasn't been worked on much let's go to arcane let's go to leaderboard and we see a little more over here so there have been a couple of folks working on that you do see the ranking you do see the researchers name and this is pretty much it all right if you have finally decided to work on a program you get a hack in it first and then you want to create a submission and this can be done over here so if you click on create submission it brings you straight to this page where you can put down your submission or your finding and I like the way this is structured so this is pretty much straightforward we can try to create a test issue we say whatever access as on um, dot 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 doesn't really matter we found this on this domain and the vulnerable endpoint was uh, whatever it was test.com which doesn't really make sense it was uh, test.io and we go down here and say it was let me see if the search works I'm putting down XSS that does not work maybe they're requiring me to say cross-site scripting and I guess I found it right here so we say this was a cross-site scripting finding they do have an integrated CVSS calculator which is nice so you can use that I don't know if you were what the CVSS is if not Google that score because that is a pretty sophisticated or well-known tool in the IT security industry and it tells you that you get a 4.2 medium finding you can upload an attachment and then it demands you to put down certain information like the POC a description the impact and a recommended solution so for now I'm just going to say test test and test for a third time and the last question is my IP address which obviously is 127.0.0.1 the thing that pops into my eyes right now is that if I wanna format this a little nicer 
I can use this button, those buttons over here, or I can just use Markdown. So I can say um, this is going to be a header, and I call this ASDF. However, I don't see an instant preview, which in my opinion is not too awesome. I, I usually like to immediately see how this text that I'm producing looks like. In that case, it doesn't give me that. In order to get that, I actually have to click on next and I am seeing the preview right here. So this is how to get the preview. This is also an entire review of your finding that you actually should go over before submitting a vulnerability. All right, this is all the submission page offers. What else to find? This was it for the main menu points in the top. So this is something I like about Integrity. There is a sleek interface which is not polluted by a lot of information. You have a dashboard, you browse to a program, you submit something, and if you do that, it actually lands in your submissions. And what you can see over here, it also stores a draft of my submission if I maybe want to check out uh, a piece or two again and then come back to the submission later. So that's pretty awesome, storing the draft right in here. In my, in my case right now, we'll delete it because this was obviously a dummy finding. So I'm going to delete that, quickly checking out this section over here. So that's just my username. I can see my activity. I can see a settings page and I can see the leaderboard. Quickly go into the settings. There's not much to do over here. I can edit my personal information, my profile, and my password, and I can set up 2FA. That's awesome that 2FA is supported. We can go to my activities, which is not much because I have signed up just the other day. So if you would have some activity, you would get or see a ranking in here. You would see your all-time points, your points out of the last 90 days, and a streak. And if you don't know how that is calculated, you can go down here to your knowledge base, which is a pretty nice overview of a couple of interesting things you usually ask yourself about by using a Bug Bunny platform. And for example, I was just speaking about the ranking. If you don't know how to get points and how many points you get for whatever submission, you can read this quick article, which was um, nicely done and tells you that, for example, if you find a critical, you get 40 points. If you find an exceptional bug, you get 50 points. And for example, regarding the streak, because I had no idea what that meant, it basically just says if in the last 90 days you have found a critical bug, you have a critical streak. So that is just telling you the most severe finding of a security researcher in the last 90 days. That's awesome, and there's a lot more to find over here. So I would recommend you to check out those couple of articles over here and learn a little more about integrity. All right, and the last item in that was the leaderboard, which brings me to the overall leaderboard of integrity. And we see that in the last 90 days, JCA was the top security researcher on integrity. And that is nice because that is comparable to what, for example, HackerOne does with their top hackers leaderboard. And I always like that to, for example, click on the user, see if they have a Twitter profile, which is not the case for this person, because those are usually people which are super helpful to, to follow in order to learn something from them. And if we look down over here, you can see the activity and you can see that this researcher has submitted a lot of books around 20 days ago, 20 to 25 days ago, but you do not know what he has submitted because it's blacked out over here. So that is a little sad because I would be interested in what this person has submitted to Telenet and all the others, but this is probably for legal reasons that we don't get to know more about the submissions. Anyway, I hope that at a later point, 
they will allow the security researcher to actually disclose this and then I would love to read about all of those. I don't know if this is working with any security researcher at Integrity yet. I guess I have checked four or five of them and I haven't seen any disclosed findings. So maybe that's a feature which is coming later. All right, so let me sum up my final thoughts on Integrity. I do you think Integrity is a pretty nice, sleek looking Bug Bunny platform? It still seems to be rather new on the market. They don't have that big amount of programs yet, and also not that big amount of security researchers yet, which on the other hand is an advantage because there is not so much competition. So I would definitely check out to go and sign up on Integrity for that reason, to hack on a couple of those programs. I felt that the programs are a little smaller size comparing to the programs on, for example, HackerOne or BugCrowd, which could also be a huge advantage because they might have smaller security teams and there might be still more vulnerabilities to find in there. Apart from that, I pretty much like the overall look and feel of it. There is still room for improvement on a couple of points for example the activity or um, leaderboard section over here and yeah with that i wanna say thank you for watching this video go check out integrity and keep watching all my other videos on my channel subscribe in the top right corner talk to you soon